What up my peeps, my folks, my family, my real ones, how you guys doing? Back at you guys with another tail. I mean, can you see me good? Hopefully. I know we don't got the best of lighting in here, but um, I'm going to finish talking about my story on the level 4 yard. And um, how it kind of coincides with what's going on right now with the northerners and the southerners and how they got a truce. And how um, we did function together real well on those upper yards. And uh, as in like... Anytime you go in prison, I mean, everywhere you go, you have a spot, a northerner, a southerner spot, blacks, whites, whatever, and that's how we function. I mean, that's how you function together. It's not like we sought up together and stuff like that, but pretty sure that's how it's the same is in there right now. I mean, we'll be neighbors and we'll break bread and stuff, and that's cool. I mean, the southerners are clean, just like we are, basically. We do the same program. But on another note, um, when, I went, when they dropped me down to the lower yard, which you see lower, they put me in like C2 or something when there's like maybe four homies in the building, which is, uh, may, that's, that was kind of like the, the norm up there on the 180 yard. And um, I, we did our thing and shit and my name, I got cleared. And as soon as I got cleared, um, they're, well, during this time we were, they're still slammed down because we were at war with the whites. And um, um, when I got cleared, uh, the first day, the fucking yard, they were doing yard and shit, and it was the the Paisa, the Paisas and the Southsiders, and I think there were some blacks and the whites went, and um, I was standing on the door because I didn't get to go out yet, and I tripped out because I heard the alarm went off, and um, you couldn't really tell what was going on because it was on another spot over here, like they, there was maybe a fight or a stabbing or something, maybe towards um, the one yard, but as soon as um, they started coming in our building, someone got hit. I mean, they were, they were walking in a group, boom, 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 and um, the seals are over here in the back, and they check you and shit. And then these pipes came in, and they what some dude was right there by the podium waiting. When he walked in, they blasted him, bat, bat, hit him a couple times in the neck, and they threw him right there on the side of the podium. And I was like, oh shit, watching from the window, like damn, where the hell they put me at? And um, everybody just walked in like normal, went to their cells on the 180 yard. I think it's 10 cells on the bottom, 10 cells on the top. So I was up here on the top, I believe, and I was looking down. I tripped out, bro, and um, that was my first, like, my first morning as a cleared homie, getting ready to go to the yard, got to see that trip me out. And, um, well, during the war, I mean, uh, they do control releases, and they release a northern cell, white cell, southern cell, black cell, and we get off, get off on the white cell. It was a war over the table. Like, they had, uh, um, the only reason I went to Salinas Valley is because that war, and it was over a table. The cops didn't want to give them a table, didn't want to give the whites a table, so they thought they were going to take our table. And we weren't going to have it. Ask any white boy that was over there. And we served them. They served us a couple times. But it was pretty bad. Over a table. That's the administration. Because when they keep us locked down. It's, it's um, hazard pay for them or something. So they get more money. And they want to keep us locked down a lot. And uh, that's most of the time. And most of the time it's over politics bro. I mean, a lot of shit happens. And they want to take our table. It ain't going to happen. But um. Uh. <clears throat> I learned right away that everything is serious in there, and as a young northerner, that's because that's what I was. And being half white and half Mexican, I had to choose if I was going to be the north. I was going to be on my Mexican side or my white side. My brother had, he had rolled with the whites, and my brother's a skinhead, and I wasn't going to go down that route. So um, when we, I kicked it with all homies out on the street, so when I went in, of course, I wasn't going to be a northerner. And I was already schooled and shit from the county jail, so... Got to prison and shit under 180 yards is way different. Um, it's all about respect. And it's all about your race, because uh, some people, would, some people think that um, that the blacks and northerners are like super allies and shit. That we function together real tough. I mean, I'm not saying that because I'm not in prison. I'm not functioning like that. I'm on the streets working, but in there, we, the only ones that the NF really function with is northerners and Northanos. They're the only ones worthy to function with the organization. Not trying to give up game and stuff, but blacks we'd be cool with them and shit, but we would never share no information, no knowledge, the only one amongst our own. That's with anybody. So to be allies, I mean, they would never jump for us. If we're like when anytime we go to war, you never see no cribs or no bloods or nobody jump for us. So it's not really like they're all, they're our allies. More like the Kumis and the four the Jamas, the four one fives, dudes from the Bay Area. We would fuck with them a lot. Uh, we can get weaponry from them and shit, but Overall, we didn't really mess around like that. It's just you stick with your race, basically. When I get some soup, um, soups or whatever, the South Siders would get soups. They give them. We'd all share each other. Even uh, we hook up some blacks and stuff, but amongst ourselves, it's mostly the race. So, the truth they have right now is a blessing, regardless. You know, 
to have all the, the Mexicans united as one, that's, dude, you can't beat that. Especially in the prison system, because that makes us stronger. It makes everybody stronger. And um, that's on any line. That's on a PC yard, the active yard, whatever. I mean, it don't matter. Everybody has to unite amongst themselves no matter what to protect yourself against predators. That's why that's why gangs are started in prison because predators, people trying to prey on other people, bigger gangs trying to prey on weaker gangs, shit like that. And that's how it is in there. And you got to stand strong against that. That's why we do our workouts. That's why no matter what, we get up, we work out, we get weaponry. <clears throat> but I don't want to expose too much shit. But as soon as you get, um, just so you know, because I'm trying to teach you guys not to go in there. But when you get clear and shit, dude, you're going to be hooping weapons besides your guys' damn hands. So, one, you got to get used to that shit, my boys. And you're going to walk to the yard, be it in the rotunda. Dude, you're walking on the 180 yard. You're going to be able to hoop, unhoop your weapon. By the time you walk down the stairs, get out that door, your shit better be unhooped, ready to go and create yourself a victim. Go stick someone. I mean, you got to be ready for it. If you can't be prepared for that kind of stuff, then it's not for you, my boy. You got to be, you got to be fit. That's why we do it. I mean, that's why you work out. I mean, that's not just the Northerners. That's everybody. You, everybody takes a weapon out. Mandatory. Whether it don't matter what race you are. If you don't want to be a victim, you're going to take a weapon out. And I was never a victim. Believe that. But, um, yeah, so well, I got moved around a little bit. And um, the first time I went to home, Selena's Valley, was because um, my Sally had wanted some soups and shit. And the, hom the homie had brought it up. And when he, the homie was bringing the, the soups up to our cell, his fucking piece dropped out on the side of his shorts. So he's going up, running upstairs, weapon dropped out. We're like, oh, come on, bro. Cops are looking in the tower. The, cops, the COs are down there because he's from another building. So automatically the cops try to run up to our cell and shit. And I had already had my stuff hooped and shit. So by the cop, the, when they came, I guess my weapon had turned around inside my stomach. I mean, it's a little PG. I'm sorry for anybody underage listening to this story. But uh, <clears throat> my weapon hit must have turned inside me and shit. And um, when the cops ran up to our stairs, because they had cuffed the homie up and fucking rubbed him up. They're like, what the fuck, man? Where would you have? So he threw, he threw when he ran up there, he gave us the weapon under the door. We flushed that shit. So mine was already hooped. My cell was already hooped. So they, they told us to come out the cell. Boom, open the door. We step out. They fucking bend you over and they wand you with a little metal detector. My shit went off. I was like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. So next thing you know, they would do it again. Goes off. And I was like, this is like in 2003, maybe. And um, I think maybe, um, uh, yeah, June 2003, when this had happened. I had the paperwork somewhere right there. But um, my, my one went, the shit went off. One on me, I was like, come on, man. So the seals were like, hey, cuff, turn, cuff up, you know. So I cuffed up and shit, and they took me down to Potty Watch. Potty Watch is the spot where they put you in a little ass fucking cell, and they tape you, they put you in just straight boxes, and they tape you up at. Tape your legs up so when you when you go shit or anything, it's gonna be stuck right there in your boxes and you can't flush. Well, you can't flush it anyways, but you can't eat it. Cause when you go in there and um, as Northerners, you can't get caught with paperwork, bro. That's treason. You're gonna get in trouble. Any type of documentation like that, trouble. And I'll get into that later on. That that's, that 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 will involve why I saw extracted with the um, lock up raw program was over some shit like that over paperwork. But I'll get into that later on. But um. <clears throat> well, I didn't want to go to potty watch for one because I was already a building channel We were already in the yard channels and shit. I've always been an educator So I've always had an education bundle hella education bundles just hella knowledge in my that I have hoop You have this stuff hoop because you don't want to get caught with it basically so I went to the damn potty watch bro. I was shitting shitting my folks. I didn't want to get caught with that didn't want to get caught with that paperwork so um, when they put me in potty watch my Sally was right there too. My Sally was um he was more he had more um authority he had all kinds of other shit more more dire bundles that needed to stay in the yard you know you can't be taking that kind of stuff to the hole that's stuff strictly for the main line so in order to um in order for my salary to stay and for me to keep my bundles i had to make a sacrifice and the sacrifice i'm already alive for the time we had caught the murder i got 16 years of life I'm, i don't have nothing to lose basically so i was like aco hey come here man he was like what's up and i was like i'm gonna shit this shit out bro and he was like, what? And I was like, I'm going to shit it out. You want the weapon? So I'm going to shit it out. Take me the hole. I'm not going to stay here. So bring me the bucket. So um, CO brings me the bucket. You know, I fucking <clears throat> do what I got to do. And I'm holding my cheeks tight. And I'm sorry it's explicit. And I fucking dropped that weapon. Just the weapon. <laughs> dropped the piece out in the bucket. 
He's like, that's all you got? And I was like, that's all I got, bro. I'm not going to sit here and shit for you. All it was a weapon that went off. Take me to the hole. <clears throat> I said, and, and, well, while during this time, he had turned the water on and stuff so we could flush the feces and stuff. My cell started flushing the shit next door, which is stupid because they keep, um, they keep a, uh, uh, what's it called, little mesh plates right there. So when you flush, they catch it. My cell wasn't tripping, but I guess they really didn't catch him because um, they all they wanted was the weapon. So I gave up the weapon. I shit that shit out. They fucking take it. Long story short, they take my ass to the hole on D yard in Salinas Valley. It was D yard at the time, and the big homie lizard. Hella big homies were back there, and um, this is right off my main line, bro. I didn't even last on the main line for like two months because my fucking Sally. I told him he flush this shit as soon as all that shit happened. He didn't want me to flush it, motherfucker from Stockton. So I kept that shit hooped. I could have flushed it, man. I would have stayed on the main line, which. Years later, I learned more. I would have, I would have knew better. I would have flushed that shit. You don't ever sacrifice the mainland status over a weapon or anything. So unless that shit, unless you're doing something, that doing some dirt, you need to be on the mainland. So I, I ended up in a damn hole and shit with all the big homies back there again, barely on the mainland a couple months back in the hole. So I get back there and um, all the big homies are back there and they they put me next to these black dudes and shit. I don't, I don't, they weren't even functioning or nothing. They were just some black dudes and shit. Now, and Sally had left, and there was just a big old buff black dude right there and shit. So, and there was uh, maybe some Southsiders on this side of me. And this dude was real quiet. He was, they were respectful and shit. So, we're doing our roll call, doing the workouts, functioning and shit. And um, maybe maybe a week later and shit, they bring a, a black dude and this dude, Sal. I mean, I'm not being racist or nothing. Just, this is what happened. So, um... Uh, me and my salad were chilling. It's maybe like 10 o'clock and shit. We they already did bar lock. We were reading, and um, we were just chilling and all. And uh, oh, I don't even know how to explain this. And it's fucking crazy. All you hear is the sound of someone being raped, bro. You just getting it. Oh man. Oh no, nigga. No, nigga. That type of shit. We're like, what the fuck? So we're, everyone in the whole damn tier was like, oh hell no, bro. I mean, we don't do this. That's not the California. The shit ain't usually popping. I mean few races do that shit and they fuck around but we don't get down like that so dude gets raped he's getting it was it was crazy bro he did he did him a couple times and shit next day um they were doing showers for us and shit and um motherfucking his sally went the big guy that raped the dude went and um me and my sally stayed we're like fuck that shit we bird bad we don't like sound. we don't shower in no showers anyways because of shit like that dirty ass dudes and shit so um we're bird bathing as soon as that motherfucker left Slid our line across the, the, we slid our line to the neighbor, to the little black dude, and, and put a kite on there, like, here, bro, fucking protect yourself. We sent him a weapon, slid the head, pulled that shit in. Basically, when you come back in the ASU, you go to the shower cuffed up with your bedroll, and when you, um, you come back in and you turn around in your cell, put your hands in the tray slot, and when your hands are in the tray slot, you're vulnerable. And during this time, just when you trust your cell, you don't, so you're vulnerable. On this one, he should have stabbed him. That's when we gave him the weapon for it. So his cell is cuffed, getting ready to uncuff. Fool should have came up blasting motherfucker while he's still handcuffed. But instead, he fucking flushed the weapon and stayed in there getting porked by this dude. Turned him out. It's some sad shit. This kind of stuff happens in there a lot, but not a lot. I mean, especially on the 180 yards. So to, for me to hear that, it kind of fucked me up. And I, I don't know, man. I'll never forget that shit. And, um,. So with, this was in D yard, and um, um, the administration opened up these new buildings called the ASU. That was ad seg. And the ASUs are administrative segregation unit. Same shit, but they got wings. It's A wing, B wing, C wing, D wing, E wing, F wing, G wing, and um, it kind of fucked our whole program up because we used to, when you're running a building, you're running a building. A B C pod on 180 yard. So it's a trip. We had to figure out a way to, to communicate. Everything's communication in there. And, to, and when you hit the ma and when you get to the hole, off the top, take you got to get a pair of boxers, take the boxers apart, hook up a line. With this, or someone like me who's been in there for a long time and who's experienced, you have like maybe 30 minutes when you get to the hole, make your line, report to the homies. So when we I got back there, I fucking um, my Sally was pretty cool. He already had a line, fish the homies and shit and um. There's um, one cell right there because we had opened up this ASU. It was June 6, 2003. Opened up the ASU right there in Salinas Valley. First time ever been in the dog cages and shit. We were in A Wing. It's at 112. And my cell was Joe G from San Jose. What up, pimping? If you hear me, um, me and Joe G right there. We opened that shit up. First Northern. Well, we were the first Northerns. And they put Northerns on the other side. My bad. 
So we we're the first ones to step in that, in that unit right there and shit. And uh, first ones to hit them dog cages. And dude, that motherfucking shit was popping. We had this um, South Sider right there next to us. Him, his name was Casper. Casper, if you hear me, what up, pimping? Again, straight G. So um, we were in there maybe two days and shit. And there's this young CO, and that motherfucker was a bitch. So we used to talk hella shit. A lot of the cops are cool, bro. I mean, uh, it is what it is. It's all about respect in there. And um, this dude, I mean, he had a, he, I don't know what he was. He had a chip on his shoulder and shit, but the cop always talking shit, bro. So one day he, he had told Casper, man, um, he, Casper was doing something and his cop um, disrespected him. And Casper was like, what the fuck, man? Don't be disrespecting me, bro. And that cop was like, what the fuck you do? And um, he's like, I don't give a fuck about you, inmate, and you're just nothing but trash. So we're like, damn. Casper got like four life sentences and shit. Motherfucker ain't never going home. He's waiting to go to gosh damn Pelican Bay and shit so he can go spend some fucking time up there. Before they, they kicked all the big homies out, they were still sending big homies up there. So, um, Casper's asked, um, the net, Casper's like, hey, check it out, you guys. He, after the cops left and shit, he's like, um, I'm gonna hit this motherfucker. And dude, they hit him in the new AC is crazy because it's straight still fucking door. There ain't nowhere to get him but the trace lot. So, um, in order to hit somebody in the trace lot, you're in the fashion of bow and arrow. And so what he did was he fucking rolled like four pieces of paper together. He rolled the put, he rolled the paper, tied it to can, put soap on it, roll it, put another paper on, put soap on it. Roll this how you can make a paper weapon as well. Roll it, put soap on it, make a fat bar. And then the same thing, take a pair of boxes apart and you use the strings. Get the strings and you braid them. Make a fat braid, hook it up on both ends, tie it, pull it, hook it up at this end. Got yourself a bow and arrow. Hook yourself up another motherfucking paper. This time when you do it, you're going to put yourself a tip on it. Hook your tip up. And then you, you tie a line on this fucking bow and arrow. Tie another paper. So then when you shoot, bam, power. And you can pull it back. So what happened was that, that more, the next morning and shit, Casper told us he's gone. So we're like, oh, hell no. Me and my salary were prepped out. We're standing right there by, by the door because he got two windows. So we're... As soon as they fed us, we got our shit, set it down all quick, bam, bam. And um, this cop opens the, the trace out to Casper, and um, I forgot Casper's fucking Sally's name, but he's from Merced or Modesto, the cool-ass Southsider. Um, Chuko. Chuko, what up? 180 babies all day. So Chuko and, um, they open up Chuko and fucking Casper's um, Southside. And, um, and, all, and that cop, he was like, hey, good morning. Try to be all cool with these fools. And um, he forgot he was talking shit the, next, the day before that. So when he went in, he went to go put the food in their tray slot. And when he put his food, his neck was exposed. So when he leaned down, Casper fucking was down there ready with his fucking, the bow and arrow. And as soon as he put his neck right there, Casper popped him. Whoo! He heard that shit hit. And the cop was like, ah! Ah! He hopped back and he just said shit sticking out his fucking neck. I swear to God, dude. And he, he tried to hop back. And, and it's a brick wall right there. So when he got back, fucking Casper pulled him. <laughs> pulled that fucking shit back. And it pulled him towards him. Towards the tra tray slot. And he was just yanking his fucking shit. Yanking him on the tray slot. And that fool was just hitting it. Back. Back. Dude, that shit was fucking crazy, you guys. I never seen or heard no bloody shit like that in my life. But um, I'll get into that on my next story. You guys have a blessed night. God bless you. Keep on watching. And I'll talk to you later.